It was pledged by Lord Shri Krishna that he will incarnate himself whenever there is deterioration in faith, religion and morality with a view to protect the saints, destroy the sinners and re-establish dharma. It is under these circumstances that Lord Shri Krishna manifested himself as Shri Sahajanan Swami. He was born of Dharmadev and Bhakti Mata at Chapaya on Ram Naomi of Vikram Savant 1837. He was named Gansham at birth. After the departure of his parents, he forsook his home and set out to practice penance at the tender age of 11. Shri Gansham Maharaj was a Baal Brahmachari, a celibate all his life. He went to almost all places of pilgrimage barefoot. During the pilgrimage, he studied the Vedas, Vedans, Bhagavad Gita, Vishnu Puran, Smritis, Vishnu Sahasranam, and many other scriptures. At the age of 18, after seven years of pilgrimage, he came to a lodge in Gujarat and met Muktanand Swami, a chief follower of Sri Ramanand Swami, the founder of Udhav Sampradaya. Ramanand Swami soon realized who this Baal Brahmachari was. He initiated him as a saint, named him as Sahajanand Swami and declared him as a successor. Ramanand Swami ordered all of his followers to abide by Sahajanand Swami's commands. By his exalted spiritual magnificence, universal love and kindness to all souls, he undertook the task to remove the miseries and woes of all human beings. He established the Swaminarayan Sampradaya which holds Bhakti in strict pursuance of the Uddhav Sampradaya. The Swaminarayan Sampradaya believes in Dharma, Gnan and Vairag. He preached love, non-violence, abstinence and the purity of thought, speech and action. He made himself accessible to even the humblest of man. The lowest of low came to his feet and their standard of living was improved to the extent that they gave up their hereditary profession of theft and robbery and adopted a religious way of life. The knife, sword and arrow were replaced by the rosary beads. He erected temples in Ahmedabad, Buj, Vartal and various other towns where deities of Sri Nar Narayan Dev and Sri Lakshmi Narayan Dev and others were installed by him personally. Lord Sri Swami Narayan arranged to write several religious books based on Bhagwat Dharma and to crown all his other activities. He wrote the Shiksha Patri for the spiritual welfare of every soul. He handed the administration of the Sampradaya under the Acharyaship of his two descendants and asked all his followers to abide by their respective Acharyas of Sri Nar Narayan Dev Gadi at Ahmedabad and Lakshmi Narayan Dev Gadi at Vartal. A British officer of the then Government of India, Sir Dunlop, was so impressed with the Lord Sri Swami Narayan and his followers that on behalf of the Government of India, he gifted them a vast area of freehold land in the Kalupur area of Ahmedabad to build the temple. The Swami Narayan temple in Ahmedabad is the headquarters of Sri Nar Narayan Dev Gadi. Lord Sri Swami Narayan appointed his adopted son Sri Ayodhya Prasadji Pandey as the first Acharya of this Gadi. He was followed in succession by Acharya Sri Keshav Prasadji Maharaj, Acharya Sri Prashottam Prasadji Maharaj, Acharya Sri Vasudev Prasadji Maharaj, Acharya Sri Devendra Prasadji Maharaj, Acharya Sri Tejendra Prasadji Maharaj, and presently His Holiness 1008 Acharya Sri Kaushalendra Prasadji Maharaj. Acharya Sri Tejendra Prasadji Maharaj was appointed the Acharya of the Nar Narayan Dev Gadi by his father, the late Acharya Sri Devendra Prasadji Maharaj, on 13th of October 1969. In over 35 years of service to the Sampradaya, his accomplishments are numerous, including establishment of temples and educational institutions in various towns and cities all over the world. Even after his retirement from the active day-to-day -day running of the Sampradaya, Nivrut Acharya Tejendra Prasadji Maharaj, now popularly known as Mota Maharajshri, embarked on a project close to his heart. 
his vision was to establish the Sri Swaminarayan Museum, an idea he was passionate about many years prior to his retirement. Sri Mota Maharajri's 60th birthday was celebrated under his condition that the proceeds from the celebration should be forwarded to this project. The main goal of this museum is to collect the articles of prasadi given by Lord Sri Swaminarayan to his beloved devotees and preserve them with utmost care and using only processes that are good for the environment. When Lord Sri Swaminarayan moved from place to place, he gave items like charanavind, items of clothing, malas, etc. to his followers as prasadi. As these items of prasadi were passed down the generations, most of the time they lost their importance as children might not have had the same level of devotion, affection or faith in God as their parents. Due to the loss of faith, these priceless items are feared to be destroyed, not cared for, sold or neglected. Sometimes children may want to split the prasadi amongst themselves. Mota Maharajri witnessed Lord Sri Swami Narayan's sandals being split between the two brothers. The thought of these items being further scattered saddened him deeply. Temples also have their own collections, but items are not properly preserved. Mota Maharajri feels great pleasure to bring all these items under one roof and let all the devotees have the privilege of seeing these collections. He wishes to project the collection to the common masses and wants to preserve them using age-old Ayurvedic methods, not using chemicals, and for further studies periodically. Brasadi items are all carefully referenced and treated using natural and reversible methods. The determined conservation team have been restoring these priceless Prasadi items for many months. Sometimes having to piece tiny parts of the items that are less than one centimetre. We are working here to set up a conservation laboratory, in-house conservation laboratory for Sri Swaminarayan Museum. Uh, here we are working on certain principles which are being followed very strictly. Uh, number one uh, is giving aesthetical or historical importance to each and every object. So we are not taking out any historical or aesthetical aspect from the object if it is not required. Number two is a minimum integration. So from our side, if nothing is required for conservation aspect, no, uh, keeping in mind conservation aspect, nothing is being added or taken out from the object. So minimum integration policy is also being followed very strictly. Number three is reversibility. Whatsoever treatment has been given to the object uh, during conservation treatment uh, aspect. So everything is totally reversible. At any point of time, whatsoever treatment we are giving to the object can be taken out from the object without, harm, without harming the object. Whatsoever materials are being used for conservation treatment are absolutely safe for the object's own future. And uh, in conservation, uh, in exhibition area, we are using all the products for fungal repellent or insect repellents are from herbal, uh, uh, herbal products. The program is called uh, Integrated Pace Management. Pace management. So uh, after a certain year of time, we want this museum to be pace free as well as chemical free. So non-toxic materials are being added uh, in exhibition area. Everything is herbal, non-toxic. And uh, most 65% uh, almost we have treated the object and 30-35% is still yet to do. New, there are many new things that have been uh, added in this museum, which are which we don't we do not find in much much other museums, like uh, the usage of light, the LED lights, which is uh, very less harmful for the objects, and uh, there are very new things, which is very nice. It is a good training program for us, well because we are learning a lot. Yeah. We uh, started in the twenty uh, first of Feb. Twenty first of Feb. It's a two, two week, week program. program. Will be here uh, till sixth of March. The museum has a pleasant ambiance with pleasing landscape. The architect has paid special attention to the factors of giving it an interesting look. One of the ideas is to divide the museum into small rooms so that visitors can see one room and come out to relax and recollect for a while. The museum complex is spread over an area of 175,000 square feet. It has 14 separate rooms to house various items of prasadi. The main highlight of this museum is the handwritten signature of Lord Sri Swaminarayan. 
This is a legal document, a power of attorney given by Lord Sri Swami Narayan to one of his followers on one rupee stamped paper, endorsed by a British officer. This is the only known document with Lord Sri Swami Narayan's signature and no one else is known to have anything similar. This is displayed in the main hall of the museum with his ashes, hair, teeth, and a special miniature murti of Sri Nar Narayan Dev that Lord Swami Narayan himself performed Bhujan and Abhishek to when he attended festivals and gatherings. Other attractions include Lord Sri Swami Narayan's belongings like clothes, vessels, malas, sandals, footprints, silver toothpick, fragments of his nails, amongst many other things. The, coll the collection also includes a flute that he played effortlessly when one of his followers commented that Lord Sri Krishna was known for playing the flute. Also featured in the museum are doors from the Mard in Vahalal, where Lord Swami Narayan himself pledged that those who pass under the Mard whilst reciting the Lord's name will surely get Kalyan. Arts and crafts from upcoming local artists are also on display in this grand museum in dedicated room. His Holiness 1008, Acharya Shri Koshalendra Prasadji Maharaj has also devoted significant time and efforts to ensure that the project has all the attributes of environmentally friendly materials. Solar panels and wind turbines are used to provide eco-friendly electricity. The Sri Swami Narayan Museum Udghatan Mahotsav took place from the 5th of March to the 9th of March 2011. With the grand opening of the museum on the 8th of March 2011, coinciding with the 189th Patotsav of Sri Naranarayan Dev. Other events included the Vijay Stump Ceremony, Pothiyatra, Srimad Satsangi Jivan Katha Parayan, Sanskritic programs in the evenings, Suvarna and Rajatula, Mahapuja, Vastu Pujan of the Museum, Abhishek at Kalupur Mandir, and Akandun for five continuous days during the Utsav. Come, let us enjoy the memories of this great Utsav which will remain in our hearts forever. The dream of a great man has finally come true. Ich 
વાસ છે સ્વામી નારાયણ મ્યુઝિયમ ખાસ છે ધામ શ્રીજી નું છે હરિ નો જા વાસ છે સ્વામી નારાયણ મ્યુઝિયમ ખાસ છે શ્રી હરિ નો ઘોડા ની ચાપ છે હરિ ચરણો ની કપડા પર છાપ છે રોજ નીચી હરિ ના હસ્તાક્ષર અહી સાક્ષાત છે સ્વામી નારાયણ મ્યુઝિયમ ખાસ છે ધામ શ્રીજી નું છે હરિ નો જ્યાં વાસ છે સ્વામી નારાયણ મ્યુઝિયમ ખાસ છે દાંત કેશ નખ રાખ્યા અહી હરિ વસ્ત્રો પાદુકા મળે પ્રભુ ના અહી પૂજા પેટી માં હરિ હાજર છે ઘણો શીરા નો લાકડા નો પાખર છે મારું મ્યુઝિયમ શ્રીજી નો આવાસ છે સ્વામી નારાયણ મ્યુઝિયમ ખાસ છે ધામ શ્રીજી નું છે હરિ નો જા વાસ છે સ્વામી નારાયણ મ્યુઝિયમ ખાસ છે સ્વામી નારાયણ મ્યુઝિયમ ખાસ છે સ્વામી નારાયણ મ્યુઝિયમ ખાસ છે के बंदे हरि को जप ले सच्चे धर्म को धारण कर ले झूठे जग से ध्यान हटा ले भक्ति भजन में मन को रमाल भव से तर ले सुमिरन कर ले कर एक नाम का पारायण સ્વામી નારાયણ સ્વામી નારાયણ સ્વામી નારાયણ મિલ ગાય બધા 